A lot of us here may not be familiar with what exactly is sim racing. Sim is short for simulator racing. Good night, everyone. Oh, he can't sit, he can't sit, he's through, and Khalil is trying to fight back now, John. The winners, the contestants down in Guyana, they're all right here. Let us hear your thoughts. Look at Tommy Gore. He's trying oh, to take a on the inside, and now they're off. They've given a the go ahead. It's Khalil Rickford right now with the whole shot. Oh, oh he oh. just misses it. Having a look on the inside, on the break-in, it seems fine for now. Daniel Williams being pushed wide. Reggie, oh, oh no, being pushed wide. Or just missing his break-in point, but they're still allowed to go. What made you enter this event? It's being Tommy on the inside, what is... Yeah, but that's a bit of a cheeky move. Tommy is of age, so don't forget to check the right. Caroline is not gonna like it. Tommy just put his car there. I guess you've never raised a door. <laughs>
who is from the Jamaica Observer. I'm no stranger to this sort of event, actually. I, from my as a child, I've always had a computer, I'd always have a console, always been gaming. Um, I think uh, hilariously, my very good friend Jason Lawson, that's actually how we met. Uh, and it was to my surprise a few years ago that I actually ran into Gregory of uh, the JEI more. And, uh, you know, I realized that he was trying to create something similar to what had been happening internationally in terms of having uh, esports. Because, you know, we all don't run fast. Uh, you know, so, <laughs> so, so it was, you know, I have to use the other skills. However, in COVID, um, from something bad comes something good. Um, as motorsports shut down worldwide, um, there was all this significant rise of uh, esports leagues. And again, given my interest, I was more than happy to watch um, a lot of my favorite sports, motorsports, go virtual. You know, it went from just being simple. Uh, demonstrations, uh, simply uh, exhibitions to flat out uh, professional drivers from the actual series up against professional e-racers to the point where, quite frankly, I, I'm, I'm very much into the e-sports, motorsports, race, sim racing leagues that are going on, especially uh, for uh, WRC, and they're using WRC 10, and of course um, the current uh, F1. Uh, F1 2020. So um, when Dwight had told me that he was planning to digitize the track I, and that they were going to do something with it, I was quite um, happy. Um, but I, what I've learned from being, from knowing Dwight is that Dwight's a very actionable person. Uh, there was a pause for a while and then uh, of course he was working in the background to get this thing going. So to my surprise, when it did happen, not that I doubted him, but, <laughs> but to actually see it in action, you know, it, it's, it's absolutely amazing. It's not replacing the real thing, but I think uh, this widens the sport. Um, it brings in a lot of people who wouldn't normally go to Dover or have an interest in being in Dover, um, both locally and internationally, because I'm sure as we work the things out, we'll start to bring in more people in the world, and they'll, the, 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 lead, the, the eventual thing is that they'll make the leap from the virtual to the real, whereas they'll become either consumers of local motorsports, or they'll eventually become competitors themselves. So there's not a situation where I believe one is replacing the other. Um, I've seen elsewhere where they work concurrently, you know, so not, yeah, there you go. <coughs> Good big work. Uh, I'll make a note of that. So, um, I'm also, again, the other surprise is uh, Uncle Richard putting his money where his mouth is. Yes. Absolutely fantastic. 
I'm actually sitting there watching it and saying, oh Lord, well, this is going to be a crash because I actually know what the track is about, how it's about, if you put your car in a wrong place. As a matter of fact, I was watching one of Tommy's races and I remember the commentator says, Kyle is not going to like it. Tommy just put his car there. Oh, Tommy can't push his car down there. That is a very bad move, boy. Don't let it <laughs> Immediately I got in here and typed and said, boy, I guess you've never raced a door. <laughs> because everybody passes right here. <laughs> I said, that is a car from where you want to pass. <laughs> so I don't know what you're talking about. So, you know, two years ago, we went to Jam West Raceway. And how, why I'm bringing this up, Naini came to me and said, we're going to have a little track day. And I said, boy, Naini, I would love with Tommy at the age of 14. Could go around the track and uh, he says yes man i'll find a car for him and i'm standing there talking to nanny and all of a sudden i see tommy drive up in a honda civic si and i look over and i look at nanny and i said the car is ticket and i say yeah man <laughs> <laughs> i walk up to the car and I, and I look inside the car and i look at tommy and then i see tommy drive down the front straight away and I said, for what you? <laughs> <laughs> so where the hell did you learn to, to drive stick shift? Right there. <laughs> I didn't have a stick in the game. I didn't have a teaching. I'm making rev out my clutch out of my car. <laughs> and also, with the sim racing, boy, if you crash, you just press and load the reset button. <laughs> so guess what, Tommy? Do all the sim racing you want. <laughs> because trust me, much cheaper than I'm crashing your hand, right? <laughs> but kudos to, to Rich. Uh, Richard has been absolutely fantastic that this was brought together by the wife and yourself and you know, having the publicity with Rory and uh, the man here, Kedron. That by doing this, we just see big, big, big things to come. And again, hats off to all of you. Uh, fantastic. Looking for bigger and better things to come in. Eh? We'd like to mention Mr. Stefan Gaggi and John Green, who are the founders of Caribbean Sim Racing Organization. Thank you and good evening, Mr. Master of Ceremonies, special guests, competitors, and media operatives. It is my pleasure to address you all on this extra special evening one that will hopefully cement the foundation of sim racing within Jamaica and in the Caribbean. My name, name is Stefan Gage, an avid motor racing enthusiast and now a wannabe sim racing organizer here in Guyana. I was invited by Mr. Lee to say a few words on our outfit, the Caribbean Sim Racing Organization. CSRO, as it's popularly known as the Caribbean Sim Racing Organization, was founded by myself and John Green also an avid motor racing enthusiast and popular videographer in Guyana. It was back in 2016 when we met through a mutual friend that we began sim racing together. We first tried it on a private server and with just us two and then joined a formal subscription-based organization being hosted by the online forum. Race department is not just a forum but the first place established for sim racers and mothers alike the persons who build the cars and tracks virtually. Being new to sim racing, race department took it upon themselves to treat us as if we were learning everything that entails driving a car. But not only that, driving a car fast, very fast. It wasn't long after when John Green was winning races and myself managing a meagerly fifth and third at best that we pondered on how awesome and beneficial something like this would be for the Caribbean and thus grew the hunger to establish such. Fast forward to the pandemic and in 2020 we made the first step. CSR, Caribbean Sim Racers, took off and after seeing the direction it was going, we began to plan even more and decided upon a name change to reflect what it was we had planned down the pipeline. CSRO was born and after a slew of championships and one-off races depicted on our social media outlets, we were contacted by Dwight Lou and introduced the first virtual rendition of Dover Raceway with the intentions to aid in debuting the track to the Caribbean. We were honored as both John and I are super fans of the venue and ensured that the event went well. 
Mr. Richard Lee or Uncle Richard, I don't know why they call me that. <laughs> Guess I'm up in age, folks. <laughs> as we call him in the WhatsApp group. So, and I guess what grew within John and me after being at Ray's department had spawned within him as well, and here we are today. Mr. Richard Lee, your love for the sport cannot be commended enough. In a time when we had no hope and Dover itself saw closing doors, you swooped, this is a little too gracious, <laughs> swooped in like an angel, he obviously doesn't know me, <laughs> and saved it. Not only that, you might have just formally birthed sim racing within the Caribbean, and we are forever thankful and grateful for you and your <laughs> I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our team, everyone who has been instrumental in getting CSRO on this point. Roger, pardon me for the pronunciations, this, this guy and I were speaking both. <laughs> Roger Diodat. Tyreek Wilson, Sean Ramdio, Stephen Bola, Klaus Clint, all of our competitors that have been with us from day one and to the new ones as well. But also not forgetting Paul, J. Wan Ram, John Green, Ridwan Aziz, our wizard behind writing spreadsheets from COVID race results, and our race steward in this Amazon Dover Raceway eSports event, and Christian Rajna who is our CSRO server operative and your race driver in this AMSA Dover Raceway event. They have all contributed not just to CSRO but to the birth of sim racing within the Caribbean and I will ask you to kindly give them all a round of applause. Thank you. Also it gives me great pleasure to introduce my very close friend Mr. Richard McCreef who is in the audience this evening. Thank you, Uncle Rich. I think, I, think, I think that name is going to stick with you. I promise you I'm going to stick to it. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, for somebody who has actually driven the Dover track myself in, in my 1988 Honda CRX, uh, all of 160 horsepower, um, I have to tell you, Dwight, you did a fantastic job. My best time was about five or six minutes. <laughs> so you'll know why I chose to become what I think is the most important group in all of this. I'm not a sponsor, I'm not a driver, I am a spectator. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think none of this would be possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree, I agree. So, I, I, I put myself up to represent spectators. <laughs> <laughs> My heroes in all of this as well is the commentators. Yeah. Because okay. last week, Friday night and Saturday, I popped up, switched off the TV. I wasn't going to bother to watch. However, the first five or ten minutes listening to John, and Stefan, they got me hooked. Look at Tommy Gore. He's trying oh, to take off. a look on the inside. And now they're off. They've given a go ahead. It's Kyle Eric for right now with the whole shot. So I'd like to congratulate them. I think they add, they bring out the excitement to the spectators. And I think with their help, it's going to grow. Why did Amsoil decide to get on board with sim racing? Well, Physical racing has been on hold due to the global pandemic and the government has not reached a position of home enough. And we totally understand why they have to protect the public and we're really not sure when that's going to happen. So racers and racing fans alike are craving for entertainment. So we saw the opportunity to get on board and sponsor not only the hosting of the event as it costs money to get the technical staff in to host a sim experience. So it's not a hands-off, 100% computer-generated gaming experience, far from it. So for the first time, open to Caribbean nationals only, AMSA has sponsored prize money in three classes, bronze, silver, and gold. So the race week, that was last week, we had three days of racing, Friday was the bronze, Saturday was the silver, and then Sunday night was gold, which was very exciting. The total prize money for that race meet was 4,000 US dollars. It was a little less last week, it's more this week, so I have to pay it out quickly. <laughs> right. um, and we may have actually opened a can of worms because some actual racers are saying, hey, what's up with us? I mean, you know, 
Yeah, I'm not able to come through the hair. But it's a good can of worms. Let's put it that way. All right. So they're getting impatient, and sim race is in an outlet while we await the physical reopening. So due to tremendous strides in technology, as Dwight has explained to us this evening, the race meets are now able to be streamed live over the internet through a variety of platforms, namely YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, to name a few. What made you enter this event? In third place, Prince Nigel Ryan of Jamaica, Mario Mills, second of Jamaica, and Raul Partab of Guyana. <laughs> Prince Nigel Ryan. His comments are, I've always been a car person since I was small, so I always used to play car games like Forza and Gran Turismo since the old days. NFS, but we all know that wasn't simulation. I'm getting old, I always played car games. I've won drift competitions in cars, drift racing, and participated in, in even race room tournaments. Corsa has always been a casual game for me, though, since I don't actually have a gaming setup and a wheel. It wasn't as fun, but I still took the opportunity to participate when I saw the flyer, and it was a great opportunity, one I wish to have again in the future. I expect more racing tournaments and trying even different things like drifting tournaments, drag, etc. Thank you for the opportunity and I hope to see you all again in the winner's circle. Just a little bit about Mario. He's 31 years old. He started sim racing three years ago and his comments are he loves motorsports and he enjoys driving on the sim because it teaches me the concept of driving a car on track. I would like to see more of these competitions be held and for people to learn and know about this sport. Congratulations. <laughs> Raul Partal, 400 US bronze event and that's first place. For the silver class, third place we have our very own 11 year old Sebastian Palmer. Jivan Pajwani out of Barbados is in second place. I would like to invite up Sebastian Palmer. Sebastian is 11 years old. <laughs> Folks, I understand that Jivan is on with us, so we'd like to congratulate him on his second place victory in the Amzal Racing Dover Raceway Sim Racing Series. Thank you. Thank you. We have Martin Webster. For the gold class, third place was Daniel Williams of Guyana, Khalil Rickford of Guyana, and then of course our very own Tommy Gore, first place of Jamaica. Okay, and we have Daniel Williams here. Gold event. Third place. Third place. Four hundred. <laughs> here we have Khalil Rickford. Gold event. Wow. Second place. Six hundred US. Excellent. Congrats. <laughs> Mr. Tommy Gore. Sixteen years old. Is correct, Tommy? Yeah. Yes. I really think it is a great base for a driver who is new to racing to get introduced to the racing world and possibly become one in the future. I also think that it would be nice to see more competitions like this in the Caribbean as it will really have found and inspired in new talents. And before Tommy, before I invite you, I'd just like to say that this young man I found him to be very polite. He is also an ambassador, a young or one of our youngest ambassadors for Amsoil and Tommy has done really a tremendous job. I'm very proud to invite Tommy up to receive his Gold Event First Place Award of 1000 US Dollars. And Tommy is of age, so Doug he'll be getting and Deborah he'll be getting his check direct. Thank you for watching another video production of 876 Streets. Subscribing to our channel definitely means a lot to us.
Thanks for your continuous support.